Hi, I'm Anne and welcome back to my channel. If you are here, it probably means you are, like me, a massive fan of Sherlock Holmes. I grew up with his books. I remember when I was about 12 or 13, I read Hound of the Baskervilles and it completely changed my life. I feel like Sherlock Holmes really stands out in classic literature as being a person who can see through disguises, who has a clever mind and a keen intuition. He doesn't simply guess. Instead, he relies on logic and analysis to see into all these little details about people. So today I'm going to share with you some more modern series which truly capture the essence of what Sherlock Holmes was. Now this list will be comprised mostly of modern series or semi-modern, so from the 90s to today. However, there are more contemporary detectives to Sherlock Holmes that you could definitely read. Uh, a few recommendations I would have is A Q Perot by Agatha Christie, Lord Peter Whimsey by Dorothy L. Sayers, and Father Brown by G.K. Chesterton. Those are three contemporaries that were published in the early 1900s that are definitely very similar to Sherlock Holmes. In fact, I'm pretty sure Agatha Christie said at one time that she was inspired by Sherlock Holmes to create a Q Perot. Just she wanted to make him look the exact opposite of how Sherlock Holmes is described. In the books, Sherlock Holmes is described as a tall, super thin, willowy man, and in the books, a Q Perot is the exact opposite. He is short, stout, balding, and a little bit, you know, Pudgy. So without further ado, let's get into my list. So the first book series featured on my list is The Gaslight Mysteries by Victoria Thompson. And the first book is Murder on Astor Place. So this kind of is a dual investigator type plot. It is set in New York City at the turn of the century. So it follows two perspectives, um, a police investigator, Frank Malloy, and a midwife, Sarah Brandt who is a young widow who's working in New York City to make her way in the world. Now, the series has currently a total of 23 books, or it might be 24 by now. I have read a total of 20 of the books, but I'm a little bit behind in the last couple of years. I haven't had a chance to read the newest ones, but it kind of follows their lives. I won't get too many spoilers for like the long-term series, but it's got a little bit romance in there too. But each book has a particular mystery that the two people set out to solve, Sarah and Frank. And of course there are friendships and conflict and murder. And it's a really interesting series that is set in a very similar setting to Sherlock Holmes. The second series is probably my shortest book series on the list, and that is the Alienist or the Dr. Chrysler series by Caleb Carr. Like the last series featured on my list, this series is also set near the turn of the century uh, in New York City. However, Caleb Carr is a historian working in New York City, so he has a lot more expertise than, say, Victorian Thompson does. Even though her research is very well done, the level of detail about how this city was run in the 1890s is really interesting. At the beginning of the field of psychology, um, psych psychologists were referred to as alienists. So this series, they have two books in the series. The Angel of Darkness is the second one, and of course The Alienist is the first one. They also have a TV series that stars Dakota Fanning and uh, Luke Evans, I can't remember the actor for uh, Dr. Chrysler himself, but this series is quite different than the books. So if you've watched the TV series and enjoyed it, I can say you'll definitely enjoy the books, but don't expect to have the exact same types of characters because they are quite different. These books are not as cozy as the majority of books featured on this list. They are quite dark. Like the first book is literally about child male prostitutes being murdered. So it's it's pretty dark going into it, but it is an excellent series, especially if you like the more psychological aspects of Sherlock Holmes. This book goes very in-depth into Chrysler's examination of psychological patients. So I love this series, but there's only two books out. I read the first one about a year ago and the second one I read in the last few months and it's top notch. The third mention on my list is the one that I haven't read quite as much as the other ones, and that is the Charlotte and Thomas Pitt series by Anne Perry. So this series starts with the Cater Street Hangman and there are a total of 
32 books so far. However, unlike the last one, I've only read the first book. Um, I've read a couple more before I started keeping track of all the books I read on Goodreads. It follows a young inspector, Thomas Pitt, who kind of um, becomes friends slash romantic interest with this woman called Charlotte and she is from the wealthy class. So the interesting thing about this series is you have this kind of break in perspective like you do with a Gaslight series but you have Charlotte being kind of a wealthy woman who has contact with all these other wealthy families that she can find information for the mysteries from whereas Thomas Pitt is much more of a poor police inspector uh, who is questioning all these kind of, I'm not gonna say low lives, but poor people on the streets and a lot of like criminal type people that a lady of breeding could not question. So it's a very interesting dichotomy. The first book actually has them marrying or getting engaged. I don't remember. Um, so it's not a spoiler to say that most of the series has them getting married. They also have a child eventually and there are um, extended series in this universe, I guess. Anne Perry has a series which features the uh, Pitt's son, but I have not read that. The next series on my list is the Molly Murphy series by Rise Bowen. So Rise Bowen is actually one of my favorite authors out there. She has written quite a few uh, cozy mystery series. She has been coming out with some standalones in recent years, but I know her from this series as well as her other series, The Royal Spinus, which is set in the 1930s, but it doesn't have quite the same feel of I guess a Sherlock Holmes world. So that's why this is the only one featured on my list. The first uh, book is called Murphy's Law and it's about this young Irish woman who comes over to New York City and finds herself caught up in a murder and of course there is this police investigator who is a captain, um, Daniel Sullivan, who is kind of her main love interest. But it's very similar to both the Gaslight series and the Charlotte and Thomas Pitt series, where it has two investigators. But unlike those series, this series mostly focuses on Molly Murphy's perspective. It is less like Sherlock Holmes, because some of, some of the solutions are not fully figured out. It's just kind of luck that she stumbles upon it. But I still see a lot of elements similar to Sherlock Holmes because it is also set in New York City around like the turn of the century, which seems a common theme with these books. This is also another thing I really like about the series. They all have very interesting titles that have to do with songs. Like one of the books is For Love of Mike or another is Oh Danny Boy. The next series on my list is a little bit earlier than the other ones. It is set in the beginning of the 19th century as opposed to the end. But to me, it really still has that feel of Sherlock Holmes murder investigation. And that is the Jane Austen mystery series by Stephanie Barron. So this is a series I got into years ago and I absolutely loved it until they kind of killed off one of my favorite characters. No spoilers. Uh, but as the title suggests, um, this is a series that follows a fictionalized Jane Austen. The first book in this series is Jane and the Unpleasantness at Scargrave Manor. This series is kind of written as journal entries or diary entries by Jane Austen herself. It is a really um, interesting series because one, the characters are much better developed than most of these on the list, but also it's a little bit complex in its writing. So I, I really love this series until they killed off my favorite character, but we won't get into that. There are currently 13 books in this series and I have read 12 out of them. Um, I don't know if I'll continue reading because like I said, I was pretty disappointed when they killed off my favorite character, but I also do enjoy this series. We'll see. The next series on my list is probably the only YA. It's less like Sherlock Holmes than a lot of the rest of them, and that is The Agency by Y.S. Lee. The first book in the series is A Spy in the House, and it kind of follows this young woman who is, I believe, half Chinese? I'm not sure, but she's half Asian, half white, and because of that she doesn't really fit into society as much as she could if she was, say, all white. Uh, she is hired by this agency to kind of go undercover to investigate these murders. 
But I first read this series way back when, probably when the second book had just come out. So back in like 2010 and I loved these books so much. They have a lot of common tropes that I don't really like that much in YA. Um, like, like hate to love type relationships because the main couple is kind of arguing a lot. There are currently four books in this series and I have read three. Since the last book was published in 2014, I have a feeling there probably won't be more of this series, which is a pity because I really enjoyed it, but I haven't read the fourth book, so I don't know if it just like got bad or wasn't popular enough or what happened. The last book on this list is an actual Sherlock Holmes series, and that is the Mary Russell and the Sherlock Holmes series by Lori R. King. So this series kind of picks up when Sherlock Holmes is older and retire. He's kind of retired to the country as to become a beekeeper. I mean, retired. He's kind of still investigating stuff, but he meets this young 17 year old Mary Russell. If you don't like, like, uh, big age differences in couples, you probably won't like this, but there's not actually much romance in that series. She becomes his apprentice as the first book of the series, which is aptly named The Beekeeper's Apprentice. And when she is older, I believe when she's 21 or 22, after she's been his apprentice for a few years, they end up getting married. But it's more of a platonic relationship. There's not much romance in this series. Now the series started in 1994 and it is still continuing to this day. There are a total of 16 books so far. I believe the next one is coming out soon. I have read a total of 15. Now this series honestly really goes downhill. Uh, with the later books. Um, I loved the first, you know, five or 10, I would say are really top of my list. The first book remains today one of my favorite books of all times, but the later ones honestly were not so good. There's my list of mystery series that kind of truly encompass the spirit of Sherlock Holmes, though I will admit after making this list I realized how many of these have like main characters that are women and maybe it's just because I prefer female investigators. I'm not sure there are some series I know of that have male protagonists, but I haven't read them. Have you read any of these books or do you think there's any books that I missed that should be on this list? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when I post. I post every Saturday at 6.15. I think I have decided that's when I'm going to post. We'll see if I can stick to it. I may switch days if I find that another day works out better for me. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye.